Intruder alert. Intruder alert. Security breach at gate 3. Intruder has been located in the north quadrant and is moving in the direction of the underground base. All units prepare to engage. Emergency battle formation. Standard battle procedures initiated. Welcome back to Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. This time we're starting off right out of the gate with Iron Gate. Pun intended. So, plot hole number one. This is a lock on cannon, not a machine gun like in the cutscene. So, no differences from Tails in gameplay. So, if you've seen those, you'll know what to expect here. Basically, just blow the bejesus out of everything. Um, and that, then you'll be good to go. Uh, like Tails, you have to get upgrades. You don't actually earn any, so you basically have nothing right now. You got nothing. Um, if you're playing essentially New Game Plus, which some people do prefer to play New Game Plus, because, well, you don't have to sit through stuff like this, you can actually glide down and with good timing, shoot the next door and then glide in. You can actually do that. Uh, so if you wanted to go back and A-rank everything after you finish up the main story, I would highly recommend considering doing that strategy. It's a little bit precise, obviously, because you have to shoot below you, but... Well, it shouldn't be that bad. Actually, there's something right here, but we can't do anything there because of those metal boxes. Just wanted to point that out in case you were wanting to see some secrets. Make sure the Mystic Melody thing for the third mission where you have to find a chow is somewhere in this room, if I'm not completely misremembering. Um, maybe I just searched this room so much that that's what I'm thinking of. Um, let's see, and there's something up there, but I don't think we can actually get up to it. Uh, that's where a chow box is. Wow, camera. Can't move the camera when I was closer to that other platform. That was weird. Um, oh yeah, I've never even explained the mechanics of the Tales of Ignorance stage. It's my bad. Uh, basically, instead of having to die, instead of dying when you run out of rings, you actually have a health meter, and rings actually just be follow your health meter. So it is actually mechanically different from uh, Sonic and Knuckles um, stages. Typically people actually break them down not the character, which I'll be doing now that we've gone to the Dark Storyline. You have the, the action, you have the speed stages, you have the action stages, no wait, you have the action, how, does it, how do people classify everything? Basically you have the shooter stages like this, very poor man's shooter if you ask me. Uh, considering I was just playing Fatal Frame, even that's not considered a good game, and it's still more fun than this in terms of shooting the controls. Um, also, if you run really fast, you can actually get through these doors before they close. Speedrun strap for you. Um, lock onto this button here. I s oh, wait. Oh, you have to trigger this cutscene. Silly me. Trying to sk skip ahead of what I was supposed to. Now you can lock onto the button. So basically, you have your speed stages, your treasure hunting stages, and your shooter stages. That's probably a better way for me to be playing it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an interesting game when two thirds of it are unpopular. Uh, the only stages people actually really fondly remember are the speed stages. Even some of them are rubbish, like Final Chase, which is the last stage of the Dark Storyline. Spoiler! And again, this game is what? Okay, next year's... I mean, by the time it comes out this year, but when I'm recording next year, 2016 will be the anniversary. This was the 10th anniversary. So 15 years. So basically, after 15 years, it's kind of interesting to me that, you know, and at the time, people loved this game, but now in hindsight, people only like to like one third of the game. It's a lot smaller than I expected. As an orange, it looks like a chow fruit, actually. Enter password. Password is Maria. 
Maria. Now all I have to do is to place the key. <laughs> anyway, what I was saying is like if you don't know anything about this game after 15 years, then it's high time for some spoilers for you, I guess. <laughs> And then again, if, also, if you don't want spoilers, why are you watching this? Because this is a walkthrough, so why are you watching a walkthrough for a game you don't want spoilers for? I mean, I guess you could just look at... Like, if you want no spoilers, just look up a text guide. So easy. It's Sonic! Well, this is what colorblind... The colorblind inhabitants of the, this world think. An Eggman! He's got an IQ of 300, and yet he's like confused at first. My name is Shadow. Since you were so kind to release me, Master. Also, the thing never really comes to fruition. The Shadow really isn't serving Eggman. He has his own agenda. Uh, definitely. Also, he can't fly. That's kind of sucky. But he can't actually fly. Sorry to disappoint if you were looking forward to flying around, but no, as Shadow, he does not fly. And you can't fly either when you play this level. So this is basically just the same boss from before, reused for the sake of being a tutorial. Uh, same strats as before, and I died. <laughs> um, yeah, hit detection. Apparently if you hit it from the side, it doesn't count as hitting. So, whoops. Probably should try to remember that. Um, but yeah, basically it's the same fight as before, um, you can kind of combo it. Oh yeah, also one thing I want to point out is in boss attack mode, if you have the bounce bracelet, by all means, bounce the heck out of this guy. I mean, Shadow doesn't get the bounce bracelet, it's Sonic exclusive, but same principle applies if you're in the Sonic version of the fight. Um, yeah, bounce bracelet makes the fight like take like 10 seconds, so yeah, please save yourself a lot of time and effort and just use the bounce face like you basically bypass having to need the crates emo the hedgehog um it's just now my nickname for shadow the hedgehog that i just came up with like i don't know a minute ago you are the military's top secret weapon but what did you mean when you said also the actor who voices eggman was actually in a ton of psycho games back in the day um Another now noteworthy example is a game called Blue Stinger for the Dreamcast, which was like a Christmas themed horror game where the Eggman voice actor voice is actually one of the supporting characters. It was actually pretty popular, if I'm not mistaken. Also, the actress who voiced Rouge the Bat, I think, was also in that game. Oh, wait, oh, Sonic, Rouge, and Eggman were all voiced the main two characters in Blue Stinger. That's right. This is the same cutscene as before, so I'm skipping it. Uh, we'll, that's, the Dark Souls is going to go a lot faster because we're going to be skipping cutscenes. Probably like three videos instead of four videos if I have good luck. This stage stinks because this is one of those warpy stages. Oh, yeah, Rouge kicks. She doesn't actually punch. So, it's not a big deal. It's, she plays exactly the same way. She can't dig. I forgot. Because we only had to upgrade his knuckles. Canucks. Uh, so, uh, I know where this one is. It, I'm fairly certain it should be up. From, no, it must be a different one. Uh, also, another thing I should point out is that they do kind of scale nicely. You're not going to just be a jerk and make you, you know, put it in a place where you can't even get the power up. <laughs> um, so for example, in this, none of the power-ups will require any digging items. Just digging gives you like shortcuts and secrets and stuff, but it's not required. And it's the one in the water tunnel, isn't it? Great. Oh, it's just in the box. I'm not complaining. That is actually kind of nice. Because there is one where you have to go through like a water tunnel, which is really, really annoying because you can drown pretty easily in the water. Rouge does not get the equivalent of the air necklace because she is... I don't know, just good for it or something. Uh, all I'm seeing is a bear that's somehow underwater. Or oh, is that an otter? Okay, I'll save the otter. What the heck? Save the animals. Um, 
Uh. Oh, it's behind the pillar. Actually, audio delay is really bad here because I can't even tell if I'm gonna drown or not. Okay, another common spot for the animal to appear is floating above this thing, but it's not here. I just wanted to make sure before heading back into the main part of the level. Wow, we're getting good luck with these elbow pieces. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna say this is a speed run by any means, but to be compared to like most of the knuckle stages, this is actually going really fast. Um, it's just okay. There are a lot of places this one can be because there's such an open space. So my advice is just if it appears here. Oh, there we go. That was easy. Um, oh, that was probably an A rank actually. Next stage is everyone's least favorite stage if you're a speedrunner because the next level requires like frame perfect timing for a couple of sections. Like if you lose momentum just once, it completely destroys your run. Yeah, so then people don't like the next level. 2022. So that's uh, eight, like almost 8:30. So like I don't know, maybe the doc doctor Eggman is trying to get home to like watch. Uh, well, like watch TV <laughs> or something. I need to get back to my base so I can watch the Big Bang Theory <laughs> or something. I don't know. Yeah, see the spinning platforms? If you don't catch the platforms on the proper cycle, you're pretty much permanently screwed into if you're a speedrunner. Because uh, everything is actually on the timer. Like Mario is fascinating to me. How Mario's timer systems for items and stuff. Basically, what happens is things load into an initial position when you get within like a screen and a half of them. So if you've ever wondered why like some people can beat levels in Mario Maker and you're like, oh my god, this level's unbeatable because the platforms are so out of sync. Well, when they played it, they just got to the platform in time for the cycle. Um, basically, but this game has set like platform cycles, which is actually kind of tricky, it leaves them some cool speed techniques, but it actually also makes them more annoying for speedrunners because you have to be frame perfect half the time in levels like this. Like see, like if I were a speedrunner I would probably be like super pissed right now because I'm missing that early cycle. <laughs> uh, and also dying, that's another thing. Um, I've also heard the point that dying, I, I actually want to test this, you know. Dying also affects the platform cycle, so I think this is also one of the only levels where people actually kind of like to die. Because it can put the platforms back on a good pattern. This is going well. <laughs> okay, enough with the speedrun strats, we gotta get serious here. Wait a minute, after this, is there another Eggman level actually? No, wait, okay, I know what the next level is. Um, it's actually poppy it's actually like a fan favorite level. Um next level. Yeah, again, I haven't played this game all the way through from start to finish in years, so my memory's a little shaky on the level order. Like Rouge actually has fewer stages than the other two, which I think could be is generally considered a good thing. To have to do less treasure hunting in the dark storyline. Like, see, that was a good platform cycle. There's stuff over to the other side, like parallel to the platform where we started that thing on. I do not want to risk it. Um, yeah, again, Eggman does have like more upgrades. Yeah, we've actually seen this album of Eggman's uh, upgrades because of uh, playing the hero storyline already. And the fact that Eggman says yo every time and jumps is just a little bit grating, I will admit. Um, yeah, that's not gonna get old at all, huh? Like, which also brings up the point of how come Tails and Eggman are the only characters with dedicated jumping sound effects? Because, like, Sonic and Knuckles just have, like, a generic kind of swooshy sound to their jumps. This part, I think, also sucks for speedrunners because like, you really have to slow down around that spot. I didn't mean to slow down that much and, you know, have fun, but drop. Wasn't my intention at all. 
But yeah, like speedruns of the Eggman stages, I think Eggman and Tail stages, I think, are actually my favorite because they require so much precision to like not lose speed. Like Sonic levels is easy to speed through. Knuckles levels are all RNG, so that can be kind of painful to watch under the circumstances. Basically, because each emerald has like I don't know five to ten different spawn locations, it's just a matter of memorizing which emeralds spawn where. If I'm not totally misremembering, I'm fairly certain that's how speedrunners do the Knuckles and Rouge stages. They basically just memorize everything. They look at one hint and then they instantly know where everything is because just that first hint. Um. Okay, that was a little bit scary. Yeah, this is the end of the stage, by the way. If you have the hover upgrade, you can super speedrun this level. Uh, as is, we can't really do a whole lot. But yeah, you can also see what I meant by similar aesthetics for levels, because this is very much like Tails' uh, Desert E level. Um, I wonder if you could glitch with that ramp jump. Uh, it just occurred to me, you could probably glitch that pretty dang good if you wanted to. Um, yeah, we're almost at the end of this level, because this is actually kind of shorty. I'm disappointed I didn't get the upgrade for Tails though. I might get it off screen before finishing up the game to make one bonus level a bit easier. More upgrades the better, is what I always say. I like how Eggman just does that jumping up and down thing, like, yup. Hop to it. Now time for everybody's favorite level, Next to City Escape. <laughs> Number 20 is ours, blah blah blah. Um, and yep, Eggman's gonna go home, watch TV. This cutscene was like so weird to me. As a kid, I'll point out why. First of all, the fact that he's monologuing to himself. And pointing everywhere, even though he's talking to himself. Don't look at me, I'm essentially talking to myself right now. We interrupt this broadcast for an important Was it here or the next? Oh, they're there. It's like, why did they take the time to animate that? <laughs> like, I'm mean, scratching himself. Like, why did they take the time to animate that when they can't even get the lip syncing done? So to be fair, if you play with the Japanese voices, I'm fairly certain the text lines up a lot better. I mean, the lip sync signs. Also, what accent is that? Look, it almost sounds to me kind of Australian, which brings up the question of why is there like one Aussie in the world of Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> You have to subtitle that, which is actually funny because now games just have like asterisk, sound effect, asterisk. You know, put like <laughs> in subtitles, which to me makes more sense. Just you know. Also, Shadow's theme song to me just sounds like a wall of noise, indiscriminately, which really kills this cutscene, in my opinion, because it's supposed to be heartwarming, but it just sounds like it's just like horrible racket. I remember hearing the term butt rock applied to the music of these, these Sonic games, and yeah, I think that's an apt description. And the term actually just referred to all hard rock slash kind of metal rock kind of stuff because of apparently an old radio station that had the slogan nothing but rock, and then just people started calling it butt rock. The other spelling of the word butt, obviously. And yeah, I probably over explained that joke. Okay, so this is Radical Highway, which was remade for Sonic Generations on the 3DS. On the 3DS version, Radical Highway is the stage, but actually, in the uh, console version, it's Escape from the City. City Escape. So, either way, either console version or either version you get, you're getting a really good level. Um, also, one thing that I've always wondered, I haven't played the 3DS version, but I'm actually curious of how that holds up. Like. How do they remake a 3D stage that this is this vertical and uh, three-dimensional? 
How did you do that in 2D? Um, so yeah, I have not gotten around to playing Sonic Generations on the yes. You also just cheese it like this. Or not. Um, okay, game. If you don't want to be nice, that's fine. <laughs> you can see where I was going with that, right? Uh, basically, because this ramp, you can see the bottom of this. You can see this part right here. So I was gonna just jump right down, but I hit a, a, a plane. And not, when I say plane, I don't mean like plain plane, I mean like. Not, yeah, not a literal plane, but you know. A line, essentially, where I can go down further. Oh, I remember the uh, flame thing, Bob, for Shadow, the flame roll. I guess I'll call it the flame roll because of reasons. But that move. So you know the thing to break no blo boxes? You actually have to get it get it after the main story. Um, after Shadow gets the light dash, that one trail of rings, that's where you get it if I'm remembering correctly. So yeah, there's actually a fairly important upgrade. It's actually locked. It's kind of weird to me. It's not like that's an part of, as part of the main story, but Shadow actually has to kind of work for it. But I don't think Shadow actually has to, has to break no blo uh, boxes. Uh, I think only Sonic does. I mean, you know, if you do it with Shadow, it does create shortcuts from time to time. But it's not like you have to do this move to progress. Okay, I've got the is on such short cycle. Um, also, the music is really good here. I'll just say that. So that guy can be a little bit of a troll because he kind of disappears quickly. So, and the camera completely freaked out. Yeah, the, the, the change in perspective completely threw me off there. That's my excuse, at least. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, there's a slide move, so I guess you could actually slide under those and boosting. Yeah, this level, I kind of wish this was the choice for the console side generations, because you could... Actually, no, I see why, because uh, Speed Highway is a lot like this. And also, you know, the running down the building is so iconic in Sonic Adventure. I could see why they chose that instead of this. Oh yeah, that's... Let's see if I can stop getting okay, look. That's Nights from Nights into Dreams. No cameo. She also cameos in Sonic Adventure, Sonic Riders, and Zero Gravity. She might be in Free Riders, but I never played it because I hear it was complete rubbish. Uh, Free Riders was basically a connect Sonic Riders, where basically you have to simulate hovering on a hover, uh, riding on a hoverboard by like tilting back and forth, which is completely broken. It's like it doesn't work. I saw a video. I think it was Pro Jared playing it, and like he was like leaning, like almost like to the point where he's almost about to fall over, and it was still not enough for the game to register his tilt. So. And that's why I never played that game. And also on Sonic Riders Zero Gravity, I played the PS2 version. If you're wondering about like, oh, but then didn't you have trouble with the uh, the the Wii controls? Yeah, I played with an actual controller on PS2. I, I think you can use like a classic controller for it, or at least a GameCube controller, which would alleviate a lot of the Wii's problems. Find the three game keys. Oh god, I forgot the syllables first. Um. Uh, scrambling, mental scramble, scrambled eggs. Um, nah, let's do it. We can do this. This is basically the equivalent of that god awful knuckles level. Yeah, that's the altar for the chow. That's really easy to find, actually. So, to be honest, though, I generally don't have as much trouble with this level. Um, big problem is there are these beetles. Not beetle like in uh, Zelda. I tend to make them sick a lot, but these guys just, like wreck you. Like they'll just outright wreck you if they spot you. So you have to be very careful about that. Uh, missed that opportunity. And yeah, this is very similar. I feel like a lot of this game's problems sp span from spawn span. I don't know spawn from the fact that this game has a lot of reused assets. I mean, in terms of why people don't like this game, it, this game does have a lot of used assets, which I could see why that would super irk people. <laughs> um, 
Like, this is basically the same level, just kind of re remixed. Pick nails. Uh, basically, these let you dig. Um, just digging with your feet sounds really not fun, but okay. Apparently, she can manage that. Question mark. Oh wow, it wasn't even under the big crushy block. That was kind of generous, actually. Wow, that is actually good RNG having two right next to each other. Doesn't happen every day, so I will take it. It happened for the Knuckle Stage too, but I just didn't have time to really look into it. Um, yeah, basically those things will kill you, so you kind of want to get to the high ground. Or just fall and then die. Um, I think it's probably in here? Nope. Sit down here. Nope. Um, this is a little bit mysterious, actually. It's not- is it over here? Nope. There's gotta be in this room. I've narrowed it down- oh, okay. It's in this. Also, there's the other problem people have with the game. This game is set in, like, Egypt, right? How does Egypt even exist in this world? I mean, like, basically every Sonic game when they cross over the real world with, like, Cartoon hedgehogs with big, big hands and feet. It's like it's just kind of weird. How like again, you have anthropomorphic animals interacting with air quotes realistic humans. <laughs> air quotes being heavily emphasized here. Um, yeah. Also, collecting hundred rings in these stages generally aren't that fun either, because you can lose rings so easily. Basically, in a hundred ring stage, if you get hit once. Quit. Like, there's no point in even trying, because there generally aren't even that many rings. It's like only with Sonic can you possibly recoup the amount of rings you need. Even then, you probably won't A rank it. You'll probably just like B rank it or C rank it at most. And this is something else that annoys me. Like, this is what I was talking about with the, uh, during the Knuckle stages of like, why can't you just have all the keys on the radar at one time? Why do you have to go back and actually collect everything? So they will only have 169 rings, so if you collect like 70 rings and get hit, you're, you're toast. How is that? Yeah, we're doing a lot better with Regis stages so far. Which is not surprising to me because hers are generally easier except the next one. The next Regis stage is kind of horrible actually. Can't say I'm looking forward to it, but it's I've gotten to the point where I can do it pretty consistently. It's a space transporter. Oh, it's really annoying me, this cutscene. It's like, why is she talking to herself so much? Why is she doing all the sexy posing? No one is even around. <laughs> like, why is she... There's so much in, like narrating to yourself in this game that it's such annoying. Like if the character's mouse didn't move and it's just implied that everyone is just thinking this, I wouldn't have a problem with this. It's just weird for characters to constantly be like talking to each other. So I don't know if it's just me or Eggman's audio so it's like way worse than all the other characters. Which wouldn't actually surprise me because that was actually the case in Sonic Adventure. Where um like I was watching him play through Sonic Adventure, and his dialogue sounds oh well, that actually kind of made you freak out there, um, because I wasn't quite sure if it was this level or another level where like you have to like use a pulley to go down, but there's also not a floor, so you actually do have to use the pulley. So I wasn't quite sure which one that was. There's a switch under that metal block, but we can do anything about that. I think that has to do with a later room, like with the power up. Um, there's some, and that might have to do with like Chow. And this platform over there, I think that might have something to do with it. Music's actually pretty good here. Okay, so this part really got my nerves as a kid. Um, I know what to do now, but as a kid, this part took me forever. You want to jump up here? Grab these. Jet engine. This is just a jet booster uh, for Eggman. Uh, and then, from there you just glide over here. Yeah, not that hard. I don't know why I had so much trouble as a kid. Um, 
I just got really turned around in that room. And where I couldn't find how to get up. And I was just bad at games as a kid. It's that too. I'm not. I, I wouldn't. I don't even know what happened there. If I accidentally released fun too soon, or if the game just decided to be a jerk, I honestly don't know. Sometimes, yeah, I have noticed a couple of cases of dropped inputs with this game. I don't know which it is in this case, but we are uh, like zero, for, like zero for three for Eggman A ranks, <laughs> which doesn't really surprise me because Eggman, like Tails, does have some of the hardest stages A rank because of the score requirements, because it really requires a good mastery of like the lock-on mechanics to uh, do well. Come up here, blind. That's another thing is the dark storyline I think is actually chronologically longer as we've seen because um well like Okay, here's the deal. The next stage spoilers involves Prison Island, which it was Tails first stage. Uh so by extension you can assume that uh with Prison Island that uh the hero storyline actually starts a lot earlier because we already have like three or four levels. Um Oh yeah, we have another Eggman stage after that. That's actually kind of weird. Like, not very creative though. Yeah, this is gonna be a longer part as well, but it doesn't really matter. We spinning. And yeah, this platform locks you in position, so you can freely just spin the control stick in circles and then let go. Uh, and basically, you have to get a really good combo here to actually make up the difference uh, for like this point. Gap. Um, like I don't. Even if I hadn't died, I probably wouldn't have gotten a rank here anyway. Just because how stiff the point requirement is here for this section, in particular for me, at least I find I generally don't lock onto enough stuff <laughs> to make that worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, it's not worth to hear every day. And oh, there's more. I couldn't remember. I can't remember anything. Okay, so press the switch and we have this hilarious thing of uh, basically a rocket breaking something off screen. Um, yeah, I didn't really think about that, did you, Sega? And we are done. Yeah, on the whole, this is going a lot smoother than the hero run. Maybe because I'm just getting back in the groove. My groove from when I was like 10. Because I was like when I was really good at this game, when I was like 10, because when I was like, when I first played the game I was horrible at it, and it took me years to actually finish the game, because I got stuck on Prison Island. <laughs> um, I also got stuck on Aquatic Mine, if I'm not mistaken. Cutscene time! Cue ominous music. I'm not sure that music is reused or not. Now, I will show the glorious achievement of what the world's leading And take back what I said, all the dialogue is muddled sounding. Shadow says pretty muddled as well. Like, I seriously wonder if this voice acting was like recorded in a garage or something. Because it sounds really muffled. This is one of them. A weapon capable of destroying an entire planet. Codenamed the Eclipse Cannon. Destroying an entire planet. So Eggman has no neck. Is this my grandfather's legacy? But it's been deactivated for some time now. Uh, you do realize it was right next to so you, you didn't have to throw it in place. Large amounts of energy are necessary. Not to nitpick, yes. just an observation shot you gave on. <laughs> So that's why we needed the Chaos Emerald. Exactly. To reactivate. It's actually the funny part because Eggman didn't actually bring Chaos Emerald to this part. Shadow did all the work. Also, one problem I have is why does Eggman want to blow up the world? Because he wants to rule. But if he blows up the world, he'll have nothing to rule. Was it just a bluff? Also, the problem is because both basically share the same storyline. 
you know that these, the bad guys fail in the end, so... Kinda makes it hard to play through the, the bad storyline, huh? This is hanging around. I also wonder if the 360 version is less like grainy sounding audio. The dialogue doesn't flow well in some of these cutscenes where. Oh, yeah, she has a Chaos Emerald too. That's the thing. Not sure where she even gets it, that. Got that one. And we're back to Prison Island. Ah, uh, Shadow was on Prison Island. I kind of forgot to mention that. Iron Gate is on Prison Island. Look at that really shoddy background. I will go in first and distract the military troops, allowing you to sneak in the base without being detected. Then, Shadow will enter the armory, where he will set the timer on these dynamite packs. I, f I feel like that line was done in two separate takes. Shadow will enter the armory. <laughs> actually cool, there are actually three chaos emeralds in this vault. This actually brings us the question, how the heck did they actually get that many chaos emeralds? 30 minutes sounds like a good length for another video, doesn't it? Huh. Next time on Sonic Adventure 2, we will be tackling Weapons Bed. See you then, and thanks for watching.